Good morning, everybody. If you would, stand and join us on the show. and say thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for loving me. It don't really matter what tomorrow brings. Well, I will say my thank you for sun and rain for what you give and take away. For all your goodness, I will always say. For all your goodness, I will You may be seated. All right, good morning. It's a way to start. Be anxious and nothing. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He's done. Then you'll receive the peace that passes all understanding. Now we've said thank you. We're going to go to prayer here in just a minute. So, again, we're looking for that peace before our service so that we can all focus upon the Word of the Lord. I'm Pastor David, by the way. I talk a little fast. Uh, Pastor Andrew sitting here over here to my left. And I still don't know Pastor Mark. He must be busy today. Uh, but we're glad you're here. If you're a guest, uh, we have blue cards on that back table. If you'd fill them out and let us know who you are, you can put them in those offering plates in the back, or you can give us to us in person. And it's not just if you're a guest. It's if you have questions about Christianity, about baptism, about joining the church, or if you're in need of biblical counsel, uh, this is a good way to let us know what you need. And so please fill that out. You can do that on the website, winfieldbaptistchurch.com as well. So we've got several prayer requests we're going to mention before we go to worship in the Word. Um, I'm going to give you the chance to share your unspokens, but Jacob Harper going to OSU next weekend. Uh, they'll be leaving after the service next week, so we're doing the whiteout next week, and so we'll talk about that at the end. But uh, be going for another treatment in this trial that he's in. They're encouraged by what they've seen and some of the results that they've had already, so let's continue to pray that that will, that will continue to move forward. Sylvia Harper, she is home, but uh, she's still waiting for some answers to why she's having her issues. Uh, and can you remember Will Simmons? I didn't have him on here, and I remembered him as we prayed last service. Will having the heart situation, uh, he is home, and he is going to Cleveland Clinic this Wednesday uh, to try to figure out what's going on and why he has the issues that he's having. And so continue to remember Will and Bryce, if you've caught any of those emails or Facebook uh, 
post, they're really struggling with Bryce right now. He's, he doesn't want to go anywhere, doesn't want to leave, doesn't want to get in a car. Uh, he, he's just not himself, and uh, we don't know why, but pray for uh, Feeney and Steve as they, uh, as they raise their sons, their adult sons as well. Uh, Bill Smith, he was with us this morning. He looks great. He has a couple more treatments to go, and then they'll do the follow-up uh, evaluation. So we're praying for good results there. Uh, Jean Hall as well, she did have to have a port put in because they were struggling with her veins. And so she does have a port in this week, and we'll continue to pray for her chemo that it will be successful. Uh, Clark Riffle should be in the, the box right now. He's supposed to have an MRI at 11 o'clock this morning. Since it's on Sunday, it must be pretty serious. Uh, so he's got had knee problems for a while. And they're giving him an MRI this morning to determine if he needs to have surgery. So we'll remember Clark. Uh, now, how about your needs, family, uh, relationships, financial? Um, we'll, we'll, pray, we'll pray to God for those. Our ministry of prayer is, uh, is PJ Elkins and Life is Precious Ministry. If you don't know PJ, um, it's a sad day. You need to know PJ. Uh, PJ has sold out for the Lord. I've told her story recently about how she was uh, led to minister after she was uh, cured of, uh, of what uh, I'm drawing a blank lupus thank you I've got something else on my mind she was cured of lupus and after that she just said Lord I'm yours I'm going and uh, she has a very uh, productive ministry in Riga Latvia the capital city of Riga Latvia and uh, the Matthew Church has this opportunity and that's the church she's a part of to host a pro-life conference on October 29th it was canceled due to COVID back when that happened. And they thought it wasn't going to take place. Now she's got a lawyer who's going to be a part of it. She's got an OBGYN doctor who's going to be a part of it. And so they'll be speaking on, on the value of the quality of life. So we'll pray for PJ and uh, pray for that conference. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful for uh, the life that you've given us, the days that we have here in your creation. Uh, we have a roof over our head. We've got food in our fridges. We've got uh, clothes on our back. And so we, we are definitely have much to be thankful for. Uh, so we lift those things up to you and offer them as, a, as an offering of praise. And we also have many needs. Um, you saw the hands go up. You, you know what's going on in the hearts of people, whether it's for themselves or for a loved one or a friend. Uh, God, we thank you that those prayers are, are now heard and will be answered according to your will and your way. We pray for Jacob. Uh, he's such a blessing to us. He is so strong in his faith. And we pray again uh, that, yes, this treatment will be successful. But while he's being treated, we pray that you'll put people in his path that need to hear about your grace and your glory. Uh, and we know he's going to share it. So give him the strength and the courage to continue to speak truth uh, in his situation. Uh, Father, we, uh, we pray for Sylvia. We pray for answers for why she's having such numbness below her waist. Uh, God, we ask again that you guide the doctors there. For Will, Will Simmons, thank you that he's home. Uh, but now we pray that uh, he will continue to get better, but that they find a, a reason for what's happened and be able to treat him. Pray for Bryce as well. Uh, pray for peace in Bryce's heart. Uh, and Pray for Will and uh, or Finney and Steve as they care for these young men. Uh, God, we pray for Bill Smith. It was great to see him this morning. He looked awesome. Uh, he's got a couple more treatments to go, and then he'll have his uh, evaluation. So we pray that that is successful. Pray for Jean. Uh, Jean's very sweet, very very dear to us. Uh, thank you that you uh, gave him an easier way to treat her now, and we pray that her treatments will be successful as well. For Clark, Clark's been such a, a faithful caregiver to his wife, and I know Terry appreciates him, and uh, she, she has a hard time watching him be in such pain. So I pray that the uh, MRI will show what the problem is and that they'll be able to give him a remedy so he's out of pain. We pray, Father, for, uh, for PJ. She is just so special and so dear. Um, to see her and to, to see what she does, it's amazing, uh, amazing how you've been able to use her. And so, God, we pray for this upcoming uh, conference that she's been able to be a part of at the Matthew Church uh, on October 29th. Father, we pray for that day and those, those people that are going to be there. We pray that your word will be clear uh, on the value of life and that all life is, is, begins in the womb. And that, God, uh, all life has value. And so I just pray that that news will get out there and here as well. So we've laid these things at your feet, Father. We, we've thanked you for the things that you've done. Now thank you for the peace that we'll have as we continue to worship and hear your word. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
you would, please stand and join us in worship. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died.
be seated. When the thousand years come to an end, Satan will be let out of prison. He will go out to deceive the nations called Gog and Magog in every corner of the earth. He will gather them together for battle, a mighty army as numberless as sand along the seashore. And I saw them as they went up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people and the beloved city. But fire from heaven came down on the attacking armies and consumed them. Then the devil, who had deceived them, was thrown into a fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. The earth and the sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were opened, including the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead, and all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. Revelation 20, 7 through 14. Thank you, Dana. Such a bittersweet passage of the Bible. Probably the, the most discouraging passage in some part, but some of the most victorious as well. We're going to talk about several points in that passage. That's why I asked her to read it. And you're going to hear uh, more about that as we go through this discussion. So if you're new to us, uh, I'm Pastor David again, and Pastor Andrew over here. Uh, we preach expositionally, which means we preach line by line, word for word, through the books of the Bible. And we're currently in the book of Matthew, the first book in the New, New Testament. Um, we preach line by line. That way we can't skip stuff that people don't like to talk about, right? There's things that aren't politically correct these days uh, in the conservative realms. Uh, but we are literal Bible teachers. We're going to teach it even if it's not correct politically. Um, there are things that there may be people disagree on. We're still going to preach it. We're still going to talk through it. Uh, and that's why I like to preach this way. It gives us a, a reason to go word for word. And it's so important. The book we're in is an eyewitness account. Matthew is a follower of Christ. He's a disciple. He was in the boat that we're going to talk about today. He was there when these things happened. That's the beauty of the four Gospels. They're all eyewitness accounts of what Jesus did, what he taught, how he lived. And they're recorded for a reason so that we can, number one, know who Jesus is. And number two, know how to follow him. Okay, that's the whole point. So this is really basic Christianity if you, if you narrow it down. And so, I'm, I'm, again, I'm looking forward to another sermon today. They all stand alone. You can listen to one sermon and get something out of it. But it is systematic. This, they do build on each other. So if you miss one, catch it on Facebook or catch it on our, our website. We archive them, uh, again, to keep the big picture of the whole book of the Bible. All right. Um, now, I'm going to talk about something today, and we've already mentioned it. That's, it's a Christian theological question that some of your unsaved friends may ask you or challenge you with. Do you actually believe in a literal Satan? All right. Do you really believe? That there is an entity, a real entity named Satan. Do you really believe that there are demons? Right? Do you really believe that there are demons and demonic activity? Do you believe there are evil forces acting behind men and women today? The answer to yeah is yes to all of those questions. It's very clear. Let me give you some examples. I, I thought about being funny and, and doing the old brother where art thou picture. You remember some of you old brother where art thou fans? They go to the crossroad, they pick Tommy up, he's got his guitar, he said he sold his soul to the devil to play the guitar. Why did you go and do that? Sell your soul. And they, one guy asks, what's the devil look like? Right? And, and Clooney pipes in, oh, he's, he's red and he's got a pointy tail. He's got a, and he says, oh, no, he isn't. And he looks just like you and me. He, he really, he, he's a, he's a really just looks like you and me. And that's, that's profound. What's he look like today? Well, how, a person, how could a person in their right mind spend years trying to learn to fly a plane just with the goal of flying it into a building full of people? That's not just simply a sinful person. That's a demonic person. How could somebody strap explosives around their own body and walk into a marketplace full of women and children and detonate themselves? That, that's not just simply depravity of man. That's demonic activity. 
We see it. How does a person walk into a school armed with assault rifles and start shooting innocent children? That's not your normal depraved individual. That's demonic activity. Have we seen it today? Absolutely. Absolutely. It it may look a little different than it did in the story we're going to talk about today. But yes, Satan is real and his demons are real. Don't just take my word for it. Listen to Chuck Swindoll, one of my favorite Christian authors and speakers. He says of his experience, he says, In my days in Southeast Asia, I saw a woman who was so demonized, she literally was held by a chain. She had a collar around her neck. Her nails had grown long, and she howled at night like an animal. She had the wildest look in her eyes. Keep that in mind. She had the wildest look in her eyes that you can imagine. And incredible strength. On one occasion, she got loose in the streets of Neha on the island of Okinawa. It took four policemen with all their strength to get her back in the paddy wagon, to get her back on her leash. Right? So yes, have we experienced people? I have. I have had two opportunities to be in the presence of people that I have no doubt were under the power of the, the, the demons themselves. It's a scary thing. And we're going to talk about it today. It is very real. Don't ever doubt the presence or the abilities of Satan and his demonic activity. It is very true. Let's go and see what happened in the Bible and see how we can overcome it. Okay, it's in Matthew chapter 8. If you'll stand with me, please. All right, to honor the reading of God's word. Okay, this is a continuation from last week. This is the word of God for us today. And by the way, I read the New Living Translation, so if it sounds a little different, that's why. It says, When Jesus arrived on the other side of the lake, the Sea of Galilee, in the region of the Gadarenes, two men who were possessed by demons met him. They came out of the tombs and were so violent that no one could go through that area. They began screaming at him, Why are you interfering with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torture us before God's appointed time? Keep that phrase in mind. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding in the distance. Some of the demons begged, If you cast us out, send us into that herd of pigs. All right, go, Jesus commanded them. So the demons came out of the men and entered the pigs, and the whole herd plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town, telling everyone what happened to the demon-possessed men. The entire town came out to meet Jesus and celebrated because these men had been rescued. No. But they begged him to go away and leave them alone. Again, some of the saddest verses in the Bible you can imagine. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your gift of life today and the chance to use it in worship. Uh, we've, we've had that opportunity this morning. Now we're going to sit down and sit under the teaching of your word. And so I pray that you will speak through it. You will change us to be more like your son, Jesus Christ, as a result. Uh, we know demonic activity is real. We see it in our world every day. But now we know and we're going to see very clearly who has the power over the demons, and that is Jesus Christ. He has all victory, and there is no demonic activity he cannot stop. And so thank you for that truth. May it be applied in our hearts today. I thank you for those who aren't Christians who may have made it to church this morning. Uh, maybe they just came with a friend or with a family member, whatever it is. They're, they're not here by accident or coincidence. They're here to hear the truth about your son, Jesus Christ, and what he can mean to them if they'll accept him as their Savior. I pray that that is the end for them today, that they will get saved. So God, now remove me from the word and speak through it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please be seated. All right, as we've been walking through the Gospel of Matthew, it should be familiar to some of you, those of you who've been around a couple years, because we preached through Mark in 2016 and 2017. Again, you see, they're, they're almost identical when you speak them, but you come into some things that are different like we have today. And what we have today is an aha moment for some unbelievers who know a little bit about the Bible, right? There are some unbelievers who say, all right, the Bible contradicts itself, and, and so it can't be the truth. There, there are different things that are said in different ways, and this is one of them, right? Because Mark only says there is one demonic man, and Matthew says there's two. Aha, it's not true. Throw the Bible away. It doesn't agree. That's garbage, all right? That's weak, very weak argument. Um, MacArthur settles the argument fairly simply, and, and I like it. He says, in their accounts of this incident, Mark and Luke mention only one demon-possessed man, but do not state that he's the only one present. 
for their particular purposes, they choose to focus on the more dominant of the two. Ta-da, right? Matthew and, or Mark and Luke don't say there's only one. They just deal with one. Mark, Matthew says there's two. How many could there have been? There could have been any number because there was a legion of demons. So no, this is not an aha moment. This, the agreement here is that Jesus has the power over the demons, no matter how many there are. So don't get hung up and miss the point. So let's talk about the demons. Let's begin to talk about demonic, uh, uh, demonic presence. Excuse me. Some of you know, if you don't know it, I'm a big horror movie fan. I love horror movies. Michael Myers, Jason, Freddy Krueger, uh, Chucky. I'm, I mean, I've seen all the Chucky movies. Uh, my favorite is Pinhead, and if you know where Pinhead's from, we're on the same wavelength. I love those movies. They're awesome because they're fake. They're not real, right? They always have the really bad guy, and who wins in the end? The good guys always win. Yeah, there's some blood, and there's some you know, gory stuff, and it's always bad acting, and it, it just, it's, it, they're, they're hilarious to watch, all right? Uh, but... There are some that are pretty scary, and, and they've gotten smart. There was one in our time, our, our, those of you my age, that really was scary, The Exorcist. You remember that one? You remember that one? Why is it scary? Because it could be true. The other stuff I mentioned is so far away, it's so fake, it's, it's impossible for it to happen. That's not impossible to happen. And so modern movies today really have taken on that presence of demonic activity presence of satan himself that's the really scary stuff because it could be true you know that hollywood made what well, they made noah they did a horrible job with noah uh they made esther they did a pretty good job with esther um they they did a good job with the ten commandments but man they could take this and run with it this would be the best horror flick out there if they really explained it but they won't because they don't want to show the ending right they don't want to show the ending so let's focus on these demon possessed men for a little bit what do we know about them? Matthew gives us some good information. First, they were powerful. All right? Not the men, the demons were powerful. Uh, these demons had completely taken over these men's lives. I, uh, I grew up in charismatic circles, very highly, extremely charismatic circles. And even at a young age, it, I would cringe when people would, would try to say, I bind you, so-and-so. And, so. and I, I, they would try to say this about demons. And I, I, No, don't ever play with that. We are not more powerful than the demons. They were angelic beings. They have more power than we do. They are much stronger than us. We cannot stand against them alone. Right? We can't do it. These guys couldn't. Day and night, they, they roamed the tombs. It says they were so violent that nobody could go in the area that they were at. That's because they were controlled by powerful entities. You can picture these men. Wild hair, unshaven scars, probably naked scabs all over the body, and the wild eyes. The smell had to be horrific if you could get close enough to them. Um, but you can imagine what they had to look like, these guys. And they were so powerful. That same power has not left this earth. As a matter of fact, it's growing in strength. But I want you to notice something very critical. When the evil spirits saw Jesus, what happened? They were afraid. They were very powerful, but they were afraid. All right? Uh, every time I read this passage, uh, I have the same illustration. So if you've heard it, you know, it's okay. Um, the Kesters blessed us about nine years ago, I think. Nine? Nine years ago. We had a dog pass away. We were, we're big dog people. We like big dogs. And uh, so their, their dog had puppies. And it was half warm runner, half black lab. All right? So they're cute, right? All puppies are cute, but they grow up to be ugly dogs. Uh, so we got invited. It was a Christmas present. We got invited. Or pastor appreciation, maybe. Ha! Yeah, the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, so they invited us to come out to their house, and we may have been the first to get the first choice. And the kids were younger. It was nine years ago, so all the kids were there, and uh, they were all involved in this. And they're like, you know, if they lie, we'll take care of it. We'll feed it. We'll scoop its poop. We'll walk it. Liars. All of them. Every one of them. But I digress. Um, we get there, and they got the puppies, and the puppies are everywhere. They're playing. They're running around. How can you decide? They're all cute. So they're like, Dad, you decide. It's my fault. I have to say it's my fault. Baxter is my issue. Um, there was this one. They all played, and they were all roughing with each other and biting and chewing and playing with my kids, except for one. 
that one was sitting at my feet, looking up at me, waiting on me to acknowledge it. True story. Which one you think I took home? What's he still do today? All right, he won't listen to Lee. He, she'll say go outside and he won't move. The kids don't even bother talking to him. Man, I speak a word and he leaves. I walk in the house, he still comes and sits at my feet and just looks at me like this. All right, if he wasn't so cute, I don't know that he'd still be around. Why does he do that? I'm the alpha. He's known from day one that I'm the alpha in the house. And so he, he submits to me. That's what happened here. No one else could control these men. But Jesus is the alpha. And when Jesus got near them, they were afraid of them. They sat at his feet because of that fear. And that's the picture that I get of that alpha moment there. Jesus is the alpha. That's exactly what happened. He dominates these demons. Okay? Now, we learned something very important about the evil spirits, the demons. They knew of Jesus. And that word of is important. They knew of Jesus. Pay very close attention here. This is the sermon within the sermon. Where do these evil spirits come from? This is more theology. All right, if God is so good, why is there evil in the world? If God is so good, why is there Satan? Why are there demonic beings and, and angels? Why, if he's so good, did he allow that to happen? Because God gives free will. God created them as angelic beings. But as we, we study in the prophets, a third of them fell when Satan fell. When Satan decided he wanted to be worshipped instead of worshipping God, he fell and chose willingly to sin. And a third of the angelic beings went with him. So these are powerful angelic beings. And guess what? They existed when the earth was created, most likely. They were created by God. And so they know that Jesus has all the power. They know that he has all the authority. They cannot stand against him. They knew of Jesus. But I always like to ask the question, did that make them Christian demons? Because they knew of Jesus. James says this, he says, You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God, even good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror. Demons believe there's a God, right? Demons believe there's a Jesus. Demons knew Jesus and were afraid of him. Is that enough? No. It's not enough for you and me either, right? You can go to Sunday school all your life. You can go to children's church all your life. You can go to Christian school, Christian high school, Christian college. You can walk the whole Christian education path, and you can know of Jesus and be as lost as this table right here. Right? You have to have a relationship with Jesus. Get this, for, get this right on your handout. Knowledge of Jesus is not enough. Knowledge of Jesus is not enough. You must be saved. You must be saved. Okay? You must know who Jesus is, yes. You must know that he came to die for you, yes. You must commit to the fact that you are a sinner and you're a lost and that without Jesus Christ, you're bound for hell. You must believe with all your heart that he died on the cross to pay the penalty of your sins. You must believe with all your heart that God raised him from the dead and, and hundreds of people saw him after his death. You must believe, though, to the point of surrendering your life, not just to gain knowledge, but to surrender your Jesus said, repent. Turn away from your sins and turn to God, right? And then you'll be saved. It's not just knowing who Jesus is. It's being saved by grace through faith. So you've got to look in the mirror before we move any further. Are you saved or do you just know who Jesus is? Right? All right, yeah, you know he's powerful, but do you actually know him? And does he know you? Right? Hmm. Good question to answer. Let's talk about him for a few minutes. Let's talk about the Messiah. All right, we talk about the demons enough. Let's talk about the Messiah. Like James said, demons have knowledge of Jesus, and they are at least smart enough to tremble in fear. All right, they at least are that smart. Uh, these demons were powerful, and they completely consumed this man, but Jesus dominated the demons. Okay, Jesus dominated the demons. Why were the demons afraid? What were they scared of? They give us a clue. Right? They give us a clue. They were afraid, and I'll, I'll tell you the short story. They were afraid of hell. They, they were afraid of the lake of fire. The demons themselves were afraid of the lake of fire. They knew that Jesus has the power to cast someone into hell. They knew it very clearly. Okay, They knew he had that power. 
So let me bring that back up on the screen for a second. This, to me, is the most important thing I want you to get. Have you come here, the demon said, to torture us before God's appointed time? Right? Before God's appointed time. If you're not a Christian, you need to pay really close attention. Every unsaved person has this same fear. They fear what comes after you die. Right? They try to say, I just, ah, oh, there's nothing after death. Right? We just die and we cease to exist. That's, that's a shallow argument. If that's true, why are you going to go to school tomorrow? Why are you going to go to work tomorrow? If you think you just die and cease to exist, why don't you party? Because you might die tomorrow, and that's all there is. Nothing you do is going to affect the outcome anyway. Why do you try to be a good father? Why do you try to be a good mother? Why do you try to be a good child to your parents? If you just die and cease to exist, hey, eat, drink, and be merry, because tomorrow I'll die. But you won't do it, will you? You'll still get up tomorrow morning. You'll still go to work. You'll still go to school. Why? Why? Because you're trying to earn that outcome, that good outcome. Because we all know God put eternity in our hearts. We all know that we live after we die. And we all know that there's only two possible options. There's heaven and there's hell. And the difference is Jesus. Right? The difference is Jesus. So that got to be very careful about that. Because here's what happens to those who reject Jesus. Anyone whose name, and this, this goes with what Dana was saying, anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. That's talking about God's appointed time. God has appointed a time. We don't know when it is. Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, he's coming back as judge, righteous judge. He's going to separate the wheat from the chaff, the sheep from the goats. In other words, he's going to separate the believers from the unbelievers. And that's it. There's no more time of mercy. There's no more time of grace. That's it. At that appointed time, those who have rejected Jesus Christ will be judged and will be cast into the lake of fire with Satan, the, the false prophet, the beast, and all of his demons. Right? I have I've heard people joke and laugh about the partying they're going to do in hell with their friends and buddies. Boy, they, they've, they've really got this off, don't they? There's no partying. There's no celebration. There's just torment for eternity. And the greatest torment is there is no hope. Right? There is no hope. That's what happens. Okay? And that's what the demons were afraid of. They were afraid of Gehenna hell. They were afraid of the lake of fire. And every unsafe person in this room should be afraid of the same. Right? Should be afraid of the same. The good news is, there's a solution. He commanded them to leave. He commanded these demons to leave. Uh, they couldn't resist Jesus. Right? They, the demons were, were more powerful than the people they possessed, but they could not resist Jesus. Jesus. Jesus speaks a word. They, they ask, send us into those pigs. The pigs are better than hell. All right, the pigs are better than hell, but guess what happens? The pigs run over the cliff and drown, and they wind up in hell anyway. They thought they were making a good deal, but they lost. Listen, Jesus has the power over all Dominic, Dominic, excuse me, demonic activity. Uh, he can release anyone from the bondage of Satan. Anyone. Okay. Notice Mark's account of the event Jesus asked what the demon's name was, and he said, what? Legion, for we are many. Don't forget that. There are many out there. There are still many out there today in our life um, that want to get, in our, get involved in our lives. The good news is Jesus has the power over them, okay? He has the power over them. Now, let's talk about the responses. That last paragraph was added for a reason, okay? It's got some important words in, in, in it, um, we picture these guys, wild hair, unshaved, bloody, scars, scabs, uh, wild eyes, this horrible smell. We, we picture them, and then all of a sudden they're normal, right? They're, you, you couldn't control them. You couldn't go by them. They were so violent. You couldn't get close to them because they would harm you. And now all of a sudden there they sit in their right mind, right? Probably cleaned up by now, and they look normal. You would think that their friends would be excited, Right? You would think that their family would celebrate. You would think, wow, praise the Lord. Jesus has rescued my brother. He's rescued my friend. He's rescued my husband. He has saved so-and-so. Praise the Lord. But no, what do they do? They beg him to leave. Jesus has just performed a miracle that they should be excited about. And they beg him to leave. Isn't that weird? But isn't that what your friends and family members do that are unsaved? Every time they get close, they beg him to leave. Every time they see something that proves that, that, that they're loved by God, they still turn away. 
Isn't that frustrating? Why do they do it? Well, there's several things. One, we're afraid of what people will think or say of us. The same thing back then, right? You get saved, especially today. People are mocking Christianity quite openly. It used to be taboo, but they don't mind now. You know, you're weak. You, you, the Bible is just a book of stories. It's, it, you, you guys are nuts. You guys are you're, you're crazy. They, they really, they think Christians are just strange people, and you're wasting your time here in church today, right? So, yeah, people may be you know, thinking badly about you, but that's okay. You may even lose friends, right? Because if you get saved and get right with God, you're probably not going to hang around with the same people anymore. You're probably going to change your friends. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, you, you should consider what people are going to think about you. What about the financial cost? Consider what happened in this picture. These people were in the pig industry. They lost 2,000 head of the pigs. Do you think that cost them some money? Jesus cost them money when this happened. That's one thing big that they would have seen. Will Jesus cost you money today if you get saved? Yeah, he'll straighten up your business practices. He may actually make you get honest in your accounting. You may have to actually handle things ethically and morally. Uh, you may even need to change jobs because you're unable to live by faith in the current one. Okay? It may cost you financially to follow Jesus, and that may be one reason you beg him to go away. But here's the big one, and I think this is the big one today in 2022. I think this is the big reason people beg Jesus to go away. Unsaved people don't want to change the way they're living. Right? We all have the Holy Spirit residing within us, and, and he is convicting us of sin, of righteousness, of God's judgment. We, we know when we're living in a wrong lifestyle. And so unsaved people don't want to give that up. They enjoy it. They're enjoying the sin that they're living in. And they know if they go Jesus' way, they've got to stop. They've got to break a relationship. They've, they've got to change what they're doing. They've got to live differently. And they don't want to do that because it's fun. They enjoy it. This is the way I was born, right? This is just who I am. I can't change who I am. You can't, but Jesus can. And it won't be a change that's going to hurt you. It's going to be a change that helps you. And yet so many of your friends and family, my own friends and family, reject Jesus, tell him to go away because they don't want to change their lifestyle, right? They know it's wrong, and they know Jesus will make them change. And so they tell him to go away. Isn't that sad? Think about it. Jesus freed these men, and their friends and family tell Jesus to go away. It's awful, okay? It's awful. Now, here's the good news, okay? They tell Jesus to go away, but the ones that were rescued beg Jesus to take them with them. They beg to go with Jesus. And we have to pull from Mark's account to get this side of the, the equation. Uh, these men have received a, a tremendous miracle. Jesus has rescued them from the demons. They knew they were demonically possessed. They knew they had no control. Now they know what Jesus has saved them from. They're like, take us with you. And remember, there's 12 disciples in the boat who didn't get out. Right? They saw these demon-possessed guys and they said, Jesus, you got this one. We'll just wait. And they did. They waited in the boat. They didn't step foot on the land. So these guys say, hey, take me with you. Let me get in the boat with you. These people over here are horrible. They don't care about me. They don't love me. They, they weren't pleased that this happened. Let me go with you. I don't want to be around these people anymore. And Jesus said, no, you stay here. And you tell people what's happened to you. Right? And he went all over. They went all over the Decapolis, the ten cities there in the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee. And we know from archaeological digs today that there are Christian churches found in all ten of them. Right? They told Jesus to go away, but these guys stayed and showed Jesus to everybody. And they changed the world in, in their own little area. And again, they come, Christ comes through them to see other people come to get saved. And so that's the invitation, and that's where it starts with you and me. You and I were left here after Jesus' miracle of salvation for us. We were left here on purpose. If he just wanted to save us and take us to heaven, wouldn't that be awesome, right? Wouldn't it be awesome to avoid all the political garbage that we're dealing with, the financial issues that we're dealing with, the violence? Wouldn't it be nice to just be done with all of that, right? Lord, come quickly, please, right? Come quickly. No, we still have unsaved friends and family members. And if Jesus comes today, they're going to spend eternity in hell. We need to see it that way. Right? We need to see there, there is an appointed time. And it is soon. And until then, we've been given life. So like these men, we can tell what Jesus has done for us. And so I challenge you. Do you have your story? We talked about this recently. 
Are you living in a way, number one, as a Christian, that your co-workers would ask you spiritual questions? If they had questions about God, questions about the Bible, would you be the one they came to to ask? You should be. Because guess what? That's what opens up the doors. That's what opens up the doors to evangelism. Is when they come and ask you about your hope and you tell them why you have hope. That is your story. So if that's where we're left here. We should have begged to get in the boat, but he's kept us here in order to tell people about him. Um, the rest of us, there are other Christians who have issues, right? People wouldn't come to them because they're meddling with demonic things. The Satan can't have you. Jesus has you. Once you're in his hand, he says, he can't take you out. But the demons can still affect you. They can still get you into situations and lifestyles that will cause you not to be a witness for Jesus Christ. So look in the mirror. Will people come to you? Are the things that you're doing, the way that you're living, um, keeping people away from you or away from Jesus? If so, today's the day to fix that. If you're unsaved, I, I'm going to put this back on the screen. God's appointed time, right? Let's see that one. God's got an appointed time. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of the glory of God. That's a fact. That's going to happen. It could happen today. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen in 10 years. It could happen in 100 years. But it's going to happen. We will all face Jesus. Those of us who have accepted him and have a relationship with him will face him in a positive way. It'll be the Bema seat. It'll be the, that's where they give away, it, the picture is the, the Olympic Games where they gave away medals. That's the Bema seat. Christians are going to go to that. And we're going to receive the rewards for the things that we did since we've been saved. We look forward to it, right? Wood, hay, and stubble is going to be burned away. The precious gems and stones are going to be kept. Yay, God, right? The Christians will see him and will be judged for our works, and it will be a positive thing. Everybody else, as you heard Dana mention in the beginning, will be raised, right? The second resurrection is for those who rejected Jesus Christ, and they'll be lined up as far as you can see. And there'll be a great white throne, and there'll be Jesus Christ sitting on that throne. And everybody's going to walk up and they're going to face him. There's nothing they can say. He's going to open the books. He's going to condemn them for every sin they ever committed because none of them are, are forgiven. And then he's ultimately going to say, since you did not believe in me, go to hell for eternity. All right? That's just a fact. Remember Revelation 20, 15. I'll repeat it one more time. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. All right? So if you're unsaved, you're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised the rest of this afternoon. Okay? God's appointed time is going to come. Don't mess with it. All right? Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. Come and ask one of us what that's about. We would love, love, no, nothing greater than to tell you how to know Jesus. God, thank you for your word. It's cutting, but it's true. Um, we're saved or we're not, one or the other. We either beg you to go away or we beg you to keep us with you. Thank you for so many in this room who have chosen the latter. We, we are surrounded by so many faithful folks. And uh, just thank you for their courage. Thank you for their lives. Thank you for what they mean to the church and the community. And I pray that you continue to strengthen them as they're reminded of the power of Jesus Christ. For those who may be meddling, those who may be dabbling uh, in sin, I just pray that you'll, you'll reveal that. You'll bring that very clearly to them and show them that that may be keeping somebody from hearing the word of Jesus. And uh, God, just, just make that change. If there's anybody here who's not a Christian, Father, this is not an attempt to scare anyone. Again, we are all created with eternity in our hearts. They know they're going to exist beyond the grave. And now they know that difference is what they've done with Jesus Christ. Will they beg him to go away again today, or will they beg him to take him with them? I pray that they'll beg him to take him with them. Give them the strength to ask. I don't know what to do, but I want to be saved. God, thank you for that in advance. Bless your invitation in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This is your time to respond. <laughs>
sing a new song to Elmo Sitton. Let heaven's mercy sing. singing those songs for eternity, so I hope you like the person sitting next to you, and maybe the Lord's going to bless each of us with a little better voice when that comes, but until then, we're going to sing to His honor and His glory. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Uh, we've had a good service today and a good service at 9 o'clock. It's been a blessing. Read your bulletins, please. There's a lot going on with the holidays coming up. Uh, just too much to read to you. 
Got a quarterly business meeting, though, just to remind you of. And then the car show. Be our 19th annual car show. Uh, we've done them every year since 2003. My first year was 2002 as an associate, and that's how I live vicariously through uh, the car show. So, unfortunately, I'm going to miss this one, but it's a good time. I encourage you to be a part of it. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Volunteer sheets. We still have jobs available, like we said in the sermon. We should have more people than we have jobs. So we still have jobs, so we need more people. So please sign up. If you've got questions about something on here, uh, details you can ask us. We'd love to explain something to you. Uh, but we need volunteers. Please get signed up. Blood drive, we could use some volunteers for that tomorrow. Uh, if you need some, there's a sign-up sheets on the back. Uh, you can ask Joellen, Pe- Joellen Perry. She's in charge of that. Um, we've got, got a little confusion in our dates. The whiteout is next Sunday, not the pink out. The whiteout is next Sunday. Just wear something white. If you don't already have a Team Jacob shirt, guess what? We Jacob's have a, got some. We've got some new ones. The, the original design with the cross knives. We got a really great deal from our niece on them. We got them for 10 bucks a piece, small, right medium, here. large, extra large, right here on the stage. So there you go. I don't have one. Yes, you can have one today. All right. You can get one today. So we're going to support Jacob next Sunday. We're all going to wear white and support the cause of ALS and finding a cure. He says oh. we'll get our next dose of Jesus juice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Amen. And then the following week will be the honor of breast cancer week. Okay. So the following week will be the pink out. So that's, that's the deal. All right, we're going to stack up all the chairs. When we get finished here today, please, all five high. We need the room. All right, Andrew? All right, so this is, some of you know this, some of you don't. This is our last Sunday with Pastor David preaching for a while. Uh, As you may know or may not know, he has surgery coming up on the 28th, and so he'll be up in Cleveland this coming Sunday. You're on drill, right? Yeah, so so he will not be here uh, next Sunday with us. Uh, but I just w- have been thinking about about every other sermon uh, in the last two months has been on healing, and uh, Pastor Dave has been told to wait or no on the prayers for personal healing, and so have we when it comes to David. And so uh, I just want to share an encouragement to you. Uh, so when he says these things, he's saying it from experience, and he's never going to say this to you, but he's living through it. And so. Um, the same Jesus that can heal you instantly is the same one that gets you through it. And uh, so that's what we're, uh, we're praying for for David. Now, he's opened the door. Hopefully this surgery brings a lot of relief and a lot of help. And things will be, after the new year, hopefully a lot, lot better. So uh, we're praying for that, and we're praying for full healing and recovery. But uh, we just want to uh, pray for him on the way out uh, today. Um, as he's, this is his last chance with him, at least standing upright like this for a little while. So, but Lord willing, that chair won't be here anymore when you get back. Exactly. So, all right. Do away with it. so, all right, let's pray, uh, and we'll pray for David as we dismiss. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, for the opportunity to worship you and to serve you. And Jesus' name is power, and breath, and living water, and it's a m- marvelous mystery to us. Uh, But Father, we walk in hope and strength and faith because of what Jesus has done through his death and his resurrection. Father, I pray that you bless everyone in this room as we go out today uh, to keep living for you. Specifically, we want to pray for healing and for strength for David. Uh, Father, I thank you for his testimony and his faithfulness Uh, And Father, I pray that you'd guide him through this, that the surgery would be successful, that the recovery would be would be quick. Um, But Father, regardless of what you have for him, we pray that you continue to strengthen him and encourage him. We pray for Lee uh, and for their kids and pray that you give them strength during this time. And Lord, uh, we're not above asking for total healing. And so that's what we're doing as well. So Father, I pray that you would do that in his life. Uh, Lord, we love you and we praise you and give you the glory for everything you're doing in us and through us. And we thank you in Jesus' name for what you've done for us. It's in his name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed.